Okay, this is a review for part of chapter 16. Chapter 16 is on carbohydrates. There is a separate review sheet that covers the concepts we deal with specifically for carbohydrates. This review is simply for the stereochemistry, for the shapes of molecules. All right, so we began talking about chirality. The properties of a chiral compound include what? Well, first off, they must contain a, a chiral carbon. What exactly is a chiral carbon? Chiral carbon, chiral carbon has four different substituents or moieties or things attached. You can look in your book and see different examples, but the main thing here is they're going to have four different things. Okay, so looking at this, this is, what is this? This is 2-chlorobutane. This carbon here in the center is chiral because it has a hydrogen, a chloro. This is a methyl group and this is an ethyl. Now granted, this carbon in the center is attached to a, uh, a carbon here and a carbon here, but just like with alphabetizing, if you're, you're alphabetizing two names, let's say, and you get to the same, the, the first letter is the same, what do you do? Well, you look at the next letter, right? And uh, this has three hydrogens, this has only two, so clearly they're different. Okay, So you're looking for a chiral carbon, something that has four different things attached. Another property of a chiral carbon is that they rate, rotate plane polarized light. Rotate. They, ra they rotate plane polarized light. So what is plane polarized light? Shine on flashlight, turn the flashlight on, and this is, their, this is their direction, the light beam is shining. You can have light travels in waves, so you can have these waves going up and down, like that. But you can also have them going in and out of the plane of the paper, like that. So the red is up and down in the plane of the paper, the purple here is into and out of the plane of the paper, and unpolarized light travels in all directions. So any, I should say all directions, but the vibrations that you see are not polarized, they, they're, they spread out like a, uh, I don't know, like a pin cushion or something. If we pass this through a polarized filter, Okay. Now the light is only vibrating in one direction or in one plane. All right. So just up and down. The purple light is blocked out by this filter. So this is polarized light or plane polarized light. And chiral compounds will rotate this plane of polarization. The fact that these compounds are optically active, so we could say here also there, the fact that they're optically active simply means that they rotate plane polarized light. That's not really a big deal, but it does allow us to discriminate one compound from the next. This is the only physical property that's different between uh, these compounds we call uh, enantiomers. We'll talk about those in just a moment. Uh, why is this uh, chirality important? This um, uh, Sometimes it's, they also refer to as asymmetric carbons. because many biological compounds, we talked about carbohydrates here, later on we'll talk about amino acids, many biological compounds and drugs, so artificial biological compounds that have a, a biological function, but they're artificial, so these drugs are chiral, Down here, 
It says uh, types of isomers based on chirality. Enantiomers are mirror image isomers. So I just want to talk about these very briefly. So mirror image isomers. Right, so they come in pairs. There's this compound and its mirror image. The trick here is the compound and its mirror image are not the same. They are isomers. They're different compounds. So why is chirality important? Because one of those two compounds will be biologically active. The other one might be biologically inert or it might be have potentially deleterious effects. So, so many biological compounds and drugs are chiral, but only one of the two mirror image isomers, these enantiomers, are used. The other one is maybe simply inert or just doesn't exist in nature or potentially harmful. We saw that with the thalidomide, potentially harmful. Okay. So these enantiomers, they're, they're chiral. They have a chiral carbon. They come in pairs. You can call them D and L, that would be one pair. Or that we could call them plus. The plus enantiomer and the minus enantiomer. That would be the other pair. They are also, we use these terms dextro, dextro rotatory and level rotatory. We'll talk more about rotatory. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. There's another type of chiral compound. These are called diastereomers. These have two or more chiral carbons. They are not mirror image isomers. So they have two, two or more chiral carbons. A pair of uh, diastereomers differ by at least one of the two carbons, but not all of them, by at least one chiral carbon, but not all chiral carbons. If all chiral carbons In a pair, and when I say differ, I mean they're mere images. A pair of isomers, uh, diastereomers differ. That is to say, they are mere images of each other. All right, so, if all chiral carbons in a compound are mere images. Well, then the compounds are mirror image images, and then these are enantiomers. Fisher projections. The thing to thing to remember about Fisher projections is we do not live in a flat world. Okay, so I'm going to draw a chiral carbon here. These dashed lines are going into the plane of the paper or the plane of the screen, and these wedges here are coming out at us. Okay. So in a Fisher projection, the horizontal bonds are coming out at you and the vertical ones are going away. And that's really only necessary if we wanted to assign what we call absolute configurations or their R and S configuration. We didn't talk about that in class, so you don't need to worry about it. But in a Fisher projection, we're going to flatten out this carbon and we'll have, I'm going to actually draw a couple different carbohydrates here. And instead of putting
instead of putting the chiral carbon you know with the elemental symbol C here for carbon we just use the cross just the bonds like in a skeletal structure so this molecule has four chiral carbons right? one two three four of them the carbon at the bottom is not chiral because it has two hydrogens but all these others where we just show the bonds crossing and no elemental symbol that is that is a chiral carbon and this molecule is uh, D-glucose the reason we say it is D-glucose is because this alcohol group at the bottom of the structure the alcohol group furthest from oops I'm sorry this is not I drew glucuronic acid let me fix that this is just a hydrogen there we go so uh, we have an aldehyde at the top this alcohol here furthest from the aldehyde if it's on the right hand side of a fissure projection it's D it's L isomer It's L isomer. Notice the alcohol group here is on the right. In a mirror, right becomes left. So now we have the alcohol group on the left. The next one down will be on the right. And then left. And then left. So the fact that this is alcohol group is now on the left means that this is the L enantiomer. And this is L glucose. Okay, so these two are enantiomers. The enantiomer designation D and L tells you which, well, well it tells you which side the alcohol group is on in the, uh, on the bottom chiral carbon, but it distinguishes one enantiomer from another. Right? So these are mirror image isomers. We could put a, a mirror plane through here, and if we shine this or show this molecule up to the mirror, this would be its reflection. Let me draw a diastereomer now. Okay. This is galactose, one of the monosaccharides that we'll be talking about later. So we have glucose, it comes in two forms, D-glucose and L-glucose. We also have galactose. Galactose is not a mirror image of glucose, it's a diastereomer. How do we know that? Well, if we look at the alcohol groups here, uh, well actually, before we do that, let's ask ourselves, is this a D or L? Galactose. Which enantiomer are we talking about? Well, this alcohol group furthest from the aldehyde, the one at the bottom, is on the right-hand side. So this is D-galactose. There's also a mirror image of this, which would be L-galactose. But glucose and galactose are diastereomers. They are not mirror image isomers. But if you so, if you notice on the first carbon. We've got alcohol group on the left, here it's on the right, okay? here it's on the right, and here it's on the left. So these two are mirror images of each other. Here it's on the left, here it's also on the left. So at this carbon and at this carbon, they're the same. Here it's on the left, here it's on the right. Because this group is on the right, we say it's D. But at this chiral carbon, they have the same orientation. If this was, if this alcohol group was on on the right hand side then we wouldn't have D galactose anymore we would have D glucose right so here it is this guy this carbon right here it's on the right hand side so if all of these carbons were the reverse we would have the enantiomer so D 
and L-glucose are enantiomers. But glucose and galactose are diastereomers where you have to have more than one chirocarbon. Here we have four. And at least one of those has to be different, but not all. And here we actually have one, two, the bottom one as well. Three are different between D-galactose uh, and L-glucose. But this one that I highlighted here, that's the same, right? It's on the alcohol groups on the left. Here it's on the left. And so that's what we mean by diastereomers. Uh, mammals use D carbohydrates, so all naturally occurring carbohydrates are the D enantiomer. 